I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. The end justifying the means. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points Memo. We are in the twilight zone. America has entered another dimension. Yesterday in Boston, President Obama continued his campaign of misleading statements. Now, if you had one of these substandard plans before the Affordable Care Act became law, and you really liked that plan, you were able to keep it. That's what I said when I was running for office. That was part of the promise we made. But that's not true. We can't keep it. Even with the word substandard introduced, it's not true. According to Washington Post, the president's comment in Boston rated four Pinocchios. That's deception at the highest level for the paper. So why does a president continue to do this? Here's the answer. In order for the USA to become a progressive nation, the primary goal of President Obama, the federal government must control key aspects of American life, health care and the economy being the top two. Thus, the end justifies the means in trying to do that. Thus, Mr. Obama keeps saying you can keep your old insurance plan if you like it, even though you can't. If your plan doesn't include the federal mandates that are being imposed. Now, Talking Points and many others have pointed that out again and again. We pointed out that Obamacare will cause many Americans, perhaps most, major inconvenience and higher health care expense. Rarely does the president mention higher deductibles and co-pays for his health program. And even though Mr. Obama's propaganda has been exposed, he doesn't seem to care. Instead of being chastened, he's emboldened. Why? Because the president believes that his vision for America, including health care for all, is more noble than any truthful statement. And so he justifies his actions even if deceit is involved. That was clear yesterday when the president said this. Today, the Affordable Care Act requires insurance companies to abide by some of the strongest consumer protections this country has ever known, a true patient's bill of rights. No more discriminating against kids with pre-existing conditions. No more dropping your policy when you get sick and need it most. So you can see that Mr. Obama is a true believer. He sees his vision as helping you, even if you don't see it that way. That is called paternalism. But instead of leveling with the folks that national health care will require deep sacrifice for many of us, he continues to sugar it up. Because of the tax credits that we're offering and the competition between insurers, most people are going to be able to get better comprehensive health care plans for the same price or even cheaper than projected. We'll see. But so far, most of the health care promises the president has made have not materialized. Barack Obama well knows that the Democratic Party and progressive Americans don't really care how he gets there. They just want more government control. If the president has to deceive to make that happen, so be it. But most Americans are not progressives and are not happy with Mr. Obama right now. A new Wall Street Journal poll says the president's job approval rating is down to 42 percent, his lowest showing ever in that poll. When asked if Obamacare is a good idea, 37 percent say yes, 47 percent no. Nevertheless, the president forges ahead. I don't think we should go back to dropping coverage for people when they get sick or they, because they make a mistake on their application. I don't think we should go back to the daily cruelties and indignities and, indignities and constant insecurity of a broken health care system. And I'm confident most Americans agree with me. But that's not true. If most Americans agreed with him, his approval rating would not be 42 percent. Or am I wrong? So again, it's not about the truth. It's about the imposition of a secular progressive society, which apparently most Americans do not want. But the president is undaunted by that, believing that he can change minds. There are debates about the role of the individual and society and our rugged individualism and our sense of self-reliance, our devotion to the kind of freedoms whose first shot rang out not far from here. 
But they are also debates tempered by a recognition that we're all in this together. And that when hardship strikes, and it could strike any of us at any moment, we're there for one another. And that as a country, we can accomplish great things that we can't accomplish alone. Classic collectivism, classic liberalism. Talking Points understands Barack Obama very well. I've studied the man intensely, and my analysis of him has been accurate and fair. I have never demonized the president insulted him or tried to marginalize him. He is a committed left-wing man, a person who believes the USA would be a far better place if only we would all listen to him. And he'll say pretty much anything to make his progressive vision come true. And that's a memo.